Hi YouTube, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to do a little bit of a deeper dive on the distributor, which of course we know causes 99.9% .9 of all the problems that uh, we attribute to carburetors. So uh, let's take a look at one of those. We're going to talk about uh, kind of why it's important, what it does, and we're just going to step by step kind of construct what exactly is that thing trying to do and where are some of the problems. Now, we already did a video called Demystifying the Distributor. We're going to demystify it a little bit more and go a little bit deeper into it. So hopefully this video helps. Let's get started. Imagine, if you will, you've got a cylinder and then you're going to have the piston. Okay, it's connected to a crankshaft that would be down here by a connecting rod. But basically what's happening, you're going to have an intake valve is opening. The piston is going to go travel down to the bottom and it's going to draft in the mixture. That's the fuel air mixture that you just made from your carb carburetor or your fuel injection, what have you. And the intake valve is then going to close. The piston is going to travel back up, compress the mixture. A spark is going to cause that mixture to ignite and the force of that combustion is going to push the piston back down. That's what drives the crankshaft. Then the piston's going to travel back up. This time an exhaust valve is open it's going to force out all of the combusted mixture that basically has been spent. And the process repeats. Intake valve opens, piston draws in fuel, intake valve closes, piston compresses fuel, fuel ignites, forces piston down, exhaust valve opens, piston forces gases out, and repeat. And if you've got a four cylinder, obviously this is happening four times. If you've got a six cylinder, it's six times. Um, each cylinder, each piston is doing its job at a very specific time. And the distributor's job, it's not the piston going down, it's not the valves, it's not the compression, uh, it's not the fuel mixture, it is timing when that spark is happening to make sure that you get an ideal timing on your combustion so that you get the most power forcing that piston back down. If the piston is still on the way up and the spark has already fired, then that's going to cause a situation where you are getting a combusting mixture that is going to be forcing the piston down at the same time it's going up. That's what causes a pinging noise uh, it, it, and can very pretty severely and pretty quickly damage your engine. So you don't want that. You also don't want the timing to be too late. If the piston has already reached its peak and is on the way back down and now you've got a spark combusting the, mi combusting the mixture, well, it's not really going to help. The piston's already partway down its travel. It's really not going to do any good. Um, at best, you're going to get muted power, but it's, it's going to be certainly a lot less than if it were right at the top, uh, ready to go. A um, couple other things that are going to be important, but we're going to get to those in a minute. This is enough demonstration for now, so let's take a look at a distributor. Okay, so when you're thinking of a distributor, you're probably thinking of something like this. And what you have is a, a big wire that comes from the coil. Ignition coil looks like this. Its job is basically to act as a transformer and you're changing the 12 volts, which goes in and out here, to 20 or 30,000, whatever the number is, that comes out here. And that happens, uh, there's a couple of coils inside, but basically if you switch this on and off, it will induce a current and it's going to come out the top when it has nowhere else to go. So we're going to talk a little bit more about that, but let's set the coil aside. And looking at the distributor, the big wire from the coil is going to come in the top and then you need a way to get it to each of the surrounding terminals that go to the spark plugs. This is a six cylinder, it's off of a TR6. Um, but obviously for four cylinder you'd have a corresponding number. Underneath the cap then, you'll have a rotor. And inside of the cap, you're gonna have a terminal there and then one for each one of the spark plug wires. Those just come straight through. And as this spins around, uh, TR6, it's this way. And then it's going to distribute it to all of the individual cylinders. So uh, that at its core is what this is doing. It's, it's uh, well, spark go in here, spark go out there, go to spark plug. And that's basically what's happening. Now, I said you need to switch the coil on and off for that to be able to happen. And that's where a lot of the wizardry inside is going. Okay, coil looks like this. Got a positive and negative terminal on it. And I'm not going to explain how the coil works in this video. That would take too long. But uh, imagine that when you have power going in the positive and out the negative side and it goes to ground, think of it as charging the coil. 
okay? Uh, you're creating a field inside. Now when that field collapses, and again, I'm not gonna explain the physics behind it, but when the field collapses, the power has nowhere else to go, so it comes out the top, okay? At a, at a greatly stepped up voltage, it goes from 12 volts to 20,000 or what have you. So what we need to do is remove the ground, which will then make that field collapse and it will fire the coil. So how do we have a ground and remove it? That is the job of contact points. There's more to add in here. Pay close attention right in there. And when this cam spins around, it opens the points and closes them. Okay? So what's happening now is you've got power that's coming from the coil going through this wire, traveling along this wire, and basically just makes it straight to this edge. And when the points are closed, it continues on, goes through the contact points, and goes into the distributor base, which is all grounded. When it opens, it disconnects that wire. It is unplugging it, and now you no longer have contact. There is no ground. The coil will fire, okay? And then it closes again. So as the engine is spinning, it's spinning the distributor around. It has the rotor that is pointing to the correct spark plug. It's removing the ground from the coil. It is causing the coil to fire, which is sending a current through this top port, through the distributor cap, and going to the appropriate cylinder to fire that spark plug. Now we need to add another piece in here because as you might imagine, if you've ever taken two wires and just kept touching them together, you see a little bit of a spark. And so we're going to add a piece into this system. And that piece is of course a condenser. Now the way to, th uh, crying out loud. Make sure to drop everything. Dropping tiny parts is important when working on a distributor. Okay. Condenser is basically a capacitor. Think of it as a shock absorber. Note this little plastic piece in here, by the way which is going to keep the wires from the condenser and the wires coming from the distributor isolated from everything except this wire. And different sets of points are going to assemble slightly differently, but they're they're effectively the same. So now, uh, let's review. You've got wire coming in from the coil. It's going into here, and it's going to both the condenser and your points. And grab my pointer here, no pun intended. And condenser, effectively shock absorber, um, it's not going to go immediately to ground. So electricity always goes the path of least resistance, which will be through this wire, through the points, and straight to ground. When you open up the points, it breaks contact here, and you won't get arcing now because you've got the condenser in place. So you've broken contact, the field still collapses, the condenser is soaking up the arcing. Again, think of this as a shock absorber. And now you've got power that is discharging from the coil, going down the distributor cap, 
into the rotor to the correct spark plug. And that is how the system works. Now, you need the coil to be able to charge for a certain amount of time in order to fire. It fires very quickly, but if it doesn't charge for long enough, you're gonna get a weak spark. So in order to do that, you need to adjust your points so that it's a very specific distance. And here's where your feeler gauge comes in, 15 thousandths with most of these. You want it riding on the cam, and then you want to move your points in until you can just barely fit it through with a little drag. Right around there is ideal. Tighten it back down. Okay, make sure to double check it. There you go. You can feel just a drag there, but it's not moving the points. Everything is set. So let's fire up this distributor machine and you can kind of see how it's working. Okay, you may have to dim the lights here so you can actually see. Okay, now I've got the lights off. So you can see where the spark is. Okay, and you can see here, up there at the top, there's actually six of them. Some of them are off camera, but you can see where the plugs are firing. Now we're nearly done, but there's a problem. Okay, back to our cylinder and piston example. And we talked already about how a spark ignites and forces the piston down and that that spark has to happen at the right time. So now we're going to get into a little bit of math here. Okay. At 750 RPMs, the each piston, all of them are going down and back up about 12 and a half times every second. And so if you, if you were to do the math on that, that's 80 milliseconds, bottom, top to bottom and back up. Okay. And when you ignite fuel, that takes about, let's call it two to three milliseconds. Okay, so out of 80, you've got two to three. And if you start that two to three, it doesn't combust instantly. It's not dynamite. Uh, fuel technically burns. Uh, so we say it combusts, it doesn't explode. And that combustion is going to take a certain amount of time. That's a few milliseconds. So you start it almost when the piston's almost right up at the top. Not completely, but almost. And that's why a lot of factory manuals will say to set, the, to set your timing at idle at four degrees before top dead center, what have you. It's, it's going to be a few degrees before so that when the combustion is at its peak and it's making the most pressure to push that piston back down, the piston has already crested and it's on its way back down and then you get to take advantage of most of that power, the, the largest amount of that power. That's what you want. And so you ignite the piston just a few degrees before it hits the full top. You get the most power to force it on its way back down. Now remember, I said 80 milliseconds and then the fuel combustion process, take, we'll just call it two to three, okay? For the important part of it, it's basically done by then. What if you speed up the engine? So now instead of 750 RPM, we're gonna take it to 1500. Well now, top to bottom and back up does not take 80 milliseconds, it takes 40. And what if you speed it up again and now you're at 3000 RPMs? Now it takes 20 milliseconds. And so the piston is going to be traveling a lot faster than it was before. But that's a problem because what doesn't change? The speed at which the fuel ignites and combusts. And so if you have the piston travel down faster and travel back up faster, if it takes two to three milliseconds for the fuel to combust, as the engine speeds up, your piston is going to be farther and farther and farther down just because the engine is spinning faster. 
and your explosion is not. So one of the two, two components is speeding up, the other is not. And so as the engine speeds up, your piston is going to be farther and farther and farther down its travel before that mixture is at its peak combustion. And remember we said that if the piston is already part of the way down and you get your combustion starting, well, it's not really going to help at that point. And so for that reason, we need something that can make the spark happen a little bit sooner and sooner and sooner so that it continues to happen at the right point in that cycle.